Art can be daring. Art can be decadent. Art can be reckless. It is dangerous when I paint. Art can be sexy. There's something really special about burlesque. Art is everywhere. Yay! Today, we roll the dice and take a look at the art of Vegas. First, the spectacular world-famous fountains of the Bellagio Hotel and Casino. The fountains of Bellagio define the very interpretation of the word fountain in our lifetime. Then, a hotel using art to change the way you think about Vegas. The Cosmopolitan has a more cosmopolitan point of view, tapping into those spaces that would otherwise be banal and making them really interesting. Also, the glamorous and sexy world of showgirls. The girls are out there and they're in practically nothing but feathers and a smile, but it's all done very elegantly and very classic. That's all next on The Art of Vegas. Las Vegas, Nevada has countless recognizable landmarks, and chief among them are the fountains at the Bellagio Hotel and Casino. No one comes to Las Vegas without having a picture shot right in front of the fountains. I think that guests always come and experience the fountains, and they feel a true sense of amazement. It is a unique experience. You hear the music, you hear this incredible sound of just this explosiveness. You hear the water, so it really touches practically all of your senses. I'm Anna Marie Marmando, Vice President of Hotel Operations here at Bellagio. Since hotelier Steve Wynn opened it in 1998, the Bellagio has strived to stand out from the rest of the hotels on the Strip by evoking a sense of romance inspired by its namesake town in Italy. Bellagio is a town on the Lake of Como in Italy, so bringing the water feature was an important factor. Bellagio was a new interpretation of Las Vegas. We offer incredible new attractions, one of them absolutely the fountains of Bellagio. The fountains are impressive, but what really makes them revolutionary is the intricate choreographing which is unique to each song they play. I think when the idea of connecting uh, the fountain music to a particular choreography, it just presented a great uh, chance for us to be truly unique. WED had already created a wonderful reputation for themselves being such innovators, so it was a great opportunity for the collaboration. WED creates magical experiences for people, and I don't mean one or two, I mean hundreds of thousands of people, like we do daily at the Bellagio, or at the Olympics, or the world's largest water fountain, the Fountains of Dubai. I'm Mark Fuller, CEO, that stands for Chief Excellence Officer of WET. We create experiences for people using nature's elements, largely water, also fire, light, wind, and sound. WET revolutionized the idea that water could be the most interesting aspect of the fountain and behave like a performer. For the most part, water has been treated over the eons as kind of an architectural material. And it seemed like there was an opportunity to look at water itself as a performing medium. I mean, let's look at water as the essence of the fountain, not, not the bowl that it's in or, or, or what it's splashing over. And then we said, well, suppose we took a very precise uh, robot, like, like you see the, the car makers using to weld or something. Suppose we have that come up out of the surface of a lake holding a jet of water and create this unbelievable performance and then disappear back down. Or suppose we take not one jet or 12 jets, suppose we take a thousand jets. WED had been in business over 15 years uh, before we did the Bellagio, but Steve Wynn approached us and, and he said, Mark, I want to create something here in Las Vegas that really separates the people who were enjoying it from being in Las Vegas. It has to be incredibly romantic. It has to lift you out of your moment where you are. And by the way, Mark, it has to be the biggest thing you can ever imagine doing in your lifetime. And so, just about three years to the day, we opened the Fountains of Bellagio. 
We knew from the beginning it was going to be something pretty amazing. But we couldn't really predict how people were going to react to it. This is one of the best things of Las Vegas. The fountains are just, just amazing to look at. It's definitely something that needs to be seen. Fountains are what everyone talks about. In fact, the fountains of Bellagio not only define Bellagio, they define at least Las Vegas, and I think I can say they define the very interpretation of the word fountain in our lifetime. The process of creating a wet feature is an interesting one and, and not altogether linear. Uh, a client will come to us and we'll get our creative designers together and we'll brainstorm all sorts of different ideas. What about this? What about that? And then we'll figure out what we need behind the scenes you know, in terms of equipment and robots and control systems and stuff. And then comes one more wonderful creative moment, which is where we choreograph the fountain. Choreographing a fountain is very uh, technical in one hand, and then you have to make sure that you're creating something magical off of that to create something extremely fluid. So when we go back to choreograph a new show for the Bellagio Fountain, um, the process starts with selecting the song. Once we agreed on the song, then the dry programming process starts. The software that we're working with is called Virtual Wet. It allows us to look at the choreography, why the computer is actually thinking of it. And I can move the planes, I can look around how it looks from different angles. Also, we can introduce different physical conditions like weather conditions, like wind, and see how does that affect the streams. So it helps us not just to create a choreography, but also to look at it with the constraints that we're going to have on site. Once the programming is finished, it takes many people behind the scenes to keep the fountains in tip-top shape. It takes a, a team of extraordinary professionals, well over 30 of them, to maintain these fountains on a daily basis, to ensure that every single performance meets the standards that we all agreed on. We have engineers, we have pool analysts, we have divers. Their maintenance makes it happen every single day. All right, Kirk, uh, go ahead and fire SCRI 10. And no air bubbles, this is set. Good job, you guys. Thanks to everyone involved, the fountains at the Bellagio continue to astound people on the Las Vegas Strip, creating a performance they'll never forget. The fountains of Bellagio, of course, is composed purely of water. But you know there is one specific part of that water that is the most special to me. Because as many times, and I guess it's in the thousands that I've been there at the fountains of Bellagio as they perform, I now turn my back on them and I look into the faces of the people watching over my shoulder. And the water that touches me is that one little drop invariably forms in everyone's eye. Coming up, the hip and edgy Cosmopolitan Hotel. Wherever we can, we infuse art into the guest experience. Then, a showgirl show that's the last of its kind. Right now, in 2014, we are the last remaining showgirl show left here in Las Vegas. We can't really see it anyplace else in the world. That's all next on The Art of Vegas. Welcome back to The Art of Vegas. When you think of Las Vegas hotels, you don't necessarily think of fine art. The Cosmopolitan aims to change that. If you think about hospitality as a, as a business, you build these fixed assets. Here's a building and that building stays. I think what art allows us to do is constantly stay in the conversation. Wherever we can, we infuse art into the guest experience. My name is Lisa Marchese. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. The Cosmopolitan has been here since December 2010. In total, we have 2,995 rooms. We have 14 restaurants, a number of great retailers. We produce about 90 concerts a year. It is like a small city. Las Vegas is a city steeped in tradition. The Cosmopolitan is starting a tradition of its own. When we opened, what we realized is we had to offer something different. And so we bring in artists that challenge the way you see the world. We can touch surfaces that we've never been able to, so digital surfaces. We have a wall works program that's the garage and four floors and each is a graffiti artist. It sounds cliche, but the Cosmopolitan has a more cosmopolitan point of view, tapping into those spaces that would otherwise be banal and making them really interesting. 
The Cosmopolitan has art on display around every corner, offering a reprieve from the Las Vegas lifestyle. So the lobby columns are pretty profound. So as a guest arrives, you walk through the glass doors and you see these 14-foot digital columns and they're mirrored and reflective on all sides. And so it creates this sense of space and scale that's unlike any other. We have a program called Pause where we just, we take a break every hour, we show an artist installation. And right now we have um, Tracy Emin, I Promise to Love You installation, which almost look like um, someone's script, but it's digital neon represented on the 65 foot marquee. And there are just these beautiful messages about love. Also throughout the premises are interactive Ardo mats designed by artist Clark Whittington. He was first at the Whitney and he had a little pop-up installation there. So we started talking to him and wanted to bring him to Las Vegas because he has this unbelievable concept, right? It's the democratization of art. It is usually the first piece of art someone buys and the first piece of art an artist sells. So the art mats are recycled cigarette machines. So you stick your $5 in almost as though you were going to buy a pack of cigarettes. You pull the lever and you never know what you're going to get. It's fun, it's simple, and it's... It's not heady, but it's still sophisticated. Artists from all around the world come to participate in the Cosmopolitan's P3 Studio, an artist-in-residence program. So P3 is a fantastic little fishbowl where artists come in every month and create these interactive participatory installations. And those artists can be from Hong Kong, they can be from Tokyo, or they can be just down the street from Las Vegas. And it allows us to keep putting something new into the world. It's a great, memorable experience for guests, and it allows us to stay fresh and interesting for guests who come time and time again. The Cosmopolitan's philosophy on art even extends to its buffet, the Wicked Spoon. The Wicked Spoon is a really a buffet reinvented, and, and just like the art program, we've tried to take a look at everything that typically exists inside a resort in Las Vegas and think, okay, how can we do it differently? How can we make it better? How can we craft this experience? My name is Brian Feiler. I am the executive sous chef of the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas. We try to do things that are approachable, but with a little bit of a twist. Something like a bolognese, but made with lamb or made with wild boar. Crispy wings, but done with duck instead of chicken. Maybe a shepherd's pie, but with beef tongue instead of your traditional ground beef. These are things that I think separate us from some other buffets that you might find. When we prepare food items, we really think about color first, then we go into texture and taste and all those things that really start to drive all of your senses. We're trying to hit everyone with each dish. I think our guests are really happy with what we do here. Wall Street Journal has said one of the best restaurants in America. USA Today said one of the best buffets in Las Vegas. Forbes magazine just voted us top 10 restaurants in Las Vegas. Um, so these are all accolades that we're really proud of and helps us uh, stay motivated looking forward to doing the next thing. The Cosmopolitan breaks away from the mold, offering a new approach to hospitality that redefines the Vegas experience. It is just absolutely critical that we lead culture in this market. And I think that's just what we do across the board. Whether that's the Wicked Spoon Buffet, the digital art program, or whatever is next. At the Cosmopolitan, we find new ideas in new places, and we do it in a new way. Coming up, a glitzy and decadent showgirl show. The art of being a showgirl is being a woman in every sense of the word. That's all next on The Art of Vegas. Welcome back to The Art of Vegas. The showgirl has become an iconic symbol of Las Vegas ever since they were introduced to the city in the 50s and helped put Vegas on the map. The art of Jubilee is centered in the tradition of the showgirl. My name is Diane Palm and I'm the company manager of Jubilee here at Bally's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Jubilee is a classic showgirl show filled with singing and elaborate dance routines. Unfortunately, this type of show is disappearing from Las Vegas. It's a big, huge production show like a Ziegfeld Follies combined with an old style, big MGM splashy musical with also European cabaret and French ooh la la because, of course, the girls are out there and they're in practically nothing but feathers and a smile, but it's all done very elegantly and very classic. Jubilee started in 1981, and uh, at the time there were several of these types of shows in Las Vegas, and over the years, the trends have come and gone, and at this point right now, we are the last remaining showgirl show left here in Las Vegas. <laughs> 
can't see it anyplace else in Las Vegas. You can't really see it anyplace else in the world. We're very proud of that and uh, hope we continue for a long time afterwards. Jubilee is the brainchild of choreographer and producer Don Arden, who's responsible for developing the classic Vegas showgirl look. And when you think of Las Vegas, you do think of these types of shows. And you think of showgirls, and it really was Don Arden that put them on the map. He was the master of this type of show here in Las Vegas, and this was his last show that he produced in Las Vegas. However, the show itself has changed over the years. It has evolved, keeping in tune with this type of entertainment. So if you saw the show when it first opened in 1981, it would be very different from how you saw it maybe 10 years later or 15 years later. We're just constantly evolving. It takes many dancers of both sexes to make a Jubilee show, and they all have years of training. The cast is divided up as to whether you're a male dancer, a female dancer, we have showgirls in the show, singers in the show. You're also classified as to whether you're short or a tall dancer, because we do have a height requirement. The reason why we have the height requirement is because, once again, that's part of the tradition. You think of somebody who's tall and gorgeous and has legs for days, but also it's because the costumes are so big. You need big, tall people, and also the stage is very big. It's 75 feet across is the proscenium March, which is huge. And finally, that's the tradition of a Don Arden show. So once again, it's keeping that tradition going that we want to maintain the same quality of show and performance from everyone. So there's a very specific way to stand like a showgirl. I can tell immediately if someone has that. There's also the art of the walk. You'd be surprised how difficult it is for trained dancers to walk across the stage, just a very simple walk in heels because there's a swing of the hips that has to happen while you're presenting yourself to the front and it's poetry. The art of being a showgirl is being a woman in every sense of the word. The sensuality, the elegance, the strength, the intelligence, it is being a woman. My name's Kat Day, and I am the line captain for the nudes at Jubilee at Bally's Casino in Las Vegas. So most all of us have a very classical background. I'm a classically trained ballerina, so coming into this was like a beautiful progression, but also a little bit of a nightmare because you can imagine going from being very light and being able to move all around and now you have these great sculptures on your body, on your arms, on your legs, on your head. And so you need to learn a whole new way to carry yourself. Every single day we're pushing out a perfect product twice a night, six days a week. Everyone's necks and shoulders are very developed because of the weight we carry on our heads. And we also have beautiful tricep muscles from carrying you know, seven, 10 pounds of jewelry on our arms. It's really quite amazing. So this is the, the big opening look. The curtain comes up and there are literally hundreds of girls. We have a big mirror in the back, so it's all magnified. And the costume that I'm wearing here is um, the bluebell, which means the covered um, dancers in the show. They wear this exact look. And then the nudes wear the same look. Um, obviously, they don't have a top on, but wearing this enormous, giant thing, um, they are able to pull off double pirouettes and batmas above their head. All 22 of them do it in precision every single night wearing this gorgeous monstrosity of a thing. It's phenomenal. In addition to the dancing and choreography, the costumes are works of art in and of themselves. The crystals in the show, they're all Swarovski crystals. They're cut just like a diamond, so that way they reflect light brilliantly. All the jewelry is imported from Paris. The feathers are imported from South America and Africa. We have rhinestones on practically anything you could put a rhinestone on. As a matter of fact, when the show first opened, the hotel had bought up almost every rhinestone in the world, and we created a worldwide rhinestone shortage. Just for example, just a male dancer's vest, just a plain ordinary vest, has 666 rhinestones. This is some of the jewelry up here. Once again, you can see it's big. All of this is handcrafted. This one originally cost $10,000. The reason why there aren't more of these types of shows here in Las Vegas or other places is the cost. It's 
very, very expensive. When the show opened, it cost $10 million in 1981. So if you're going to do them, you have to do them right. And a lot of people tried to do them, and obviously we're doing it right because we're still here. Since Jubilee is the last of its kind in Vegas, it's single-handedly carrying this tradition on into the future. You know, I want the audience, when they come to see our Jubilee show, I want them to have the best experience they can ever possibly have. I want them to come in here and go, wow, I was really blown away. I didn't expect that. That was great. I had such a good time because it's a great show. Having been so lucky to have this find me and understanding uh, the history of why the show girl is here and how important we are to the city of Las Vegas and how important we are to the history of entertainment. It's, it's a little bit of a big crown to wear, but it's such a joyful and beautiful crown that I can't, I, I'm very touched, I'm very honored to get to be part of that legacy and knowing that we are continuing to carry on this craftsmanship and this story and these things that financially no one can do what we get to do every night. Like, there's just, there's no way to recreate this. It is the most special, honored, magical thing I can possibly think of.